Hey there, Zero X here, back on the Prototech server. And I want to uh, give you an update on how far we got with the portals. Uh, also, I want to uh, show you my whole setup and how all the parts work together. But first, let's go and check out uh, how far we got. So the progress is still the largest on the west side. So, yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of portals here. And this is the, the newest portal, so let's go check it out. I've already built up the flying machine that will go on further, and we are at 26.36 million blocks out. So we're actually really close to the world border now. And this flying machine, if everything goes to plan, will actually make it to the world border. So expect that to happen pretty soon. So uh, to show you the whole setup, uh, I'm gonna switch to, uh, uh, to, to a test server in creative mode, because I can show you stuff uh, better in creative mode. So i uh, see you there in a moment. So here I am on the creative mode copy of the server. So let's go and check out uh, the chain of events that will need to, that need to trigger to generate the portal. So everything starts over here with this auto safe detector, which is designed by example. And this auto safe detector uh, is tick perfect. So I will have the exact. Uh, timing of the of the auto save and I can capture this it in this 900 game tick clock because one auto save interval is 900 game ticks so let's turn this on which will enable me to um, to capture the signal in here now what I do is I just go over here you see this lamp turning on now this is actually the first pulse from the autosave detector, but that one gets discarded because it's not actually detecting the autosave, it's just detecting me walking away from it. So I have to wait a little bit. Let's speed things up. So when it triggers the second time, then it's actually uh, synchronizing the clock. And on the third time, you see that it's synchronized because both lamps will turn on at, at the same moment that you've seen it. So with this setup uh, ready, what I can do, let's first uh, summon uh, an AFK player here. There we go. So, uh, with this setup done, uh, I can take care about the next part, which is actually not one flying machine, but 1000 flying machines. So uh, there is a special value. If I do slash unload in carpet mod, I can, uh, I can, uh, it prints out this value. Uh, and at the moment it's 1024. And in order for to give my flying machines more range, so they can travel further, I need to increase that value a lot. And uh, to do that, what I actually have to do is to load a lot of chunks uh, during one autosave interval, and they need to unload, or they, they all need to start unloading in the same game take. What I also need to do is to turn on the permaloader, otherwise the flying machines will crash. Also, I can turn this off again, so it doesn't trigger a second time. Here you can see those flying machines flying here in this uh, chunk debug uh, tool that, uh, yeah, we, we made that, I made that together with XCOM and Earth Computer quite a while ago, ago already. And it shows us which chunks are getting loaded. 
and you can see it's loading the whole area here. And yeah, let's go back. This is the exact game take that happens. So this yellow means that Minecraft is queuing all those chunks for unloading. So it's marking all those chunks for unloading and because it's uh, it's so many chunks, I just got this uh, hash set size value to 32,768, which gives my flying machines uh, 10 times more, uh, uh, 32 times more uh, reach than if it were were at 1,024. So the next part in the chain is, chain is the timer. So this here was my old timer. I'm not using this anymore, but it still works. And it's a little bit tedious to program this timer. Uh, I, later I came up with this design, uh, which has a nice display for programming it and also doubles as a countdown display. And it has 16, uh, registers where I can program uh, game tick perfect uh, values. So those are, all well, the values are in seconds, but there are two fractional digits here. So I can address a single game tick with those values. So what, what it actually does is it has one of the registers selected and then it's counting, counting then it's counting until it reaches uh, the value that is uh, programmed into that register. So for example, after 45 seconds, it would then send out a redstone pulse through the instant wire uh, to the distance where the flying machines are. And then it would just fetch the value from the next register and do the same thing. So yeah, actually internally it's counting up. And what I then have here is a subtractor, which, which subtracts a value from, from the memory. Now it's, it subtracts, yeah, it subtracts, it subtracts the timer value from the value that's coming from the memory. And that way I get a countdown. So the next link in the chain of events is that I somehow need to get the, uh, the signal that goes through this instant wire here to the flying machines. And it has to stay tick perfect for this flying machine to work. So first of all, I have not one flying machines, but I, machine, but I have four flying machines, each going into a different direction. So I actually, need this little device here to control um, which of the pulses the timer sends out belongs to which flying machine. So the first the first trigger is always at game tick zero and it goes to all the flying machines. This one is, doesn't start anything. This one just uh, loads the areas behind the portal and yeah, and this, how this is set up, this would then trigger at the sixth pulse, at the seventh, and at the tenth pulse. So the corresponding ad addresses from uh, from the timer would be four, five, and eight. So, um, up here, I'm just sending the signal up here with some uh, slam stone. And here I have a small setup. Oops, uh, I didn't want to go there. And up here, I have a small setup to actually send the signal through the portals. So there is a dispenser here with minecarts. The minecart uh, gets dispensed. Uh, the piston retracts and then the minecart will go into the portal. Let's just demonstrate this. Mm. 
Yeah, but there is a problem with those portals. Uh, as you can see, there are sometimes those beams uh, coming out of the portals, and when that happens, the portal cannot teleport any entities. And that is a problem because if I try to send the signal and it gets delayed because the portal cannot teleport entities, then my flying machine would just crash and not generate a portal because it was uh, started at the wrong game tick. So what I'm actually doing is I'm doubling uh, the signal that happens down there. So it sends two minecarts. And what's on the other side? It's a circuit that undoes this. I had to undo this and um, yeah, this, this is pretty simple as well. So when the signal comes in here, it first goes into this uh, this, delay, uh, this clock here. So and if the if the second signal is delayed, then uh, this fading the, this fading comparator clock will just uh, trigger the output part and send and and start the flying machine. If the first um, minecart got delayed, then um, this is going to be in this position. And then the signal will go right through here and to the output. So uh, either way, it's going to uh, trigger at the correct game tick and start the flying machine. So my previous video, I actually have shown uh, my tool uh, that where, uh, where you can find a uh, portal seed chunk and the chunks where the flying machines can generate portals. Um, and with the portal seed chunks, you can do a very cool thing. Well, let me demonstrate that. So I have this set up here. I can trigger that. The first trigger doesn't do anything the way it's programmed. And the second one will trigger this redstone line going into that direction. There's something very curious going to happen. And there it is. Um, for some reason, it generated a chunk at the end of the redstone line, which is pretty interesting because if you go there and build this redstone line, you will definitely have loaded this chunk before. So it should be generated already. But there is actually a way around that. So you will see if when I'm going there, it will generate the chunk again. There, you just briefly so could have seen that in the chunk debug tool. And what I actually have here is a chunk save state setup. So um, yeah, I will link a video about that in the description, but what it basically does is uh, it has those books, which are filled with a lot of rubbish text. And this will cause, if they are arranged in a specific pattern, so I have, there are two different books here with different text in it. And if you interleave them in, in a chest and, or a chugger box and you have two of those, then the chunk is, uh, then the chunk will take up so much memory that the game will not uh, will, will fail to save the chunk because there's just some uh, there's one megabyte limitation built into the game. So if the game tries to save a chunk that's larger than one megabyte, it will just silently fail and not save it. So when the chunk unloads, it will not save, and that means it reverts to how it was before. So when this gets triggered. It's just going to fill the shulker boxes. Once the shulker boxes are filled, they're going to be dispensed into this next chunk. 
Oops, uh, let me turn on the chunk borders. So you can see this here is in, in the next chunk and this way I can actually prevent this chunk from ever saving. So the way I did this, I just moved in really fast here. I also uh, had an eye on the auto save detector. So, uh, so I so I had the time to place some chunk boxes like this in this chunk uh, before it could ever save to disk. And then I could just build the setup here. The setup also has a second uh, set of books. So uh, this chunk also is save stated, so it will not save. And that's just how it reverts back to how it was before before I triggered it, and that way I can reuse it as often as I want. So this here is the, sp is the special portal seed chunk. There are no portals generating here, because this is not actually an area where the portals can generate, but this chunk um, sets the seed for uh, portals to generate, and that's what I use with the flying machine setup. Okay, so reloaded a backup because uh, I just destroyed the setup by going to the chunk save state setup. So uh, now it's back to normal. So and I have those flying machines here, and I want one of those flying machines to generate a portal. What do I need to do for that? I need to pro first program the timer. So um, what values should I program into the timer? And for that, I actually have improved my tool here. Um, but yeah, uh, you can see it now also shows the priority zero chunks, but most importantly, it, uh, it can now calculate the timings for the flying machines. Um, the first thing that I need to know is uh, where the flying machines actually are. So what I can do is I can just do this and copy the x and z coordinate of that. And tell this tool to get me to that position, tp to that block. Um, what I also need is the seed of the, of the world. That's not the seed of the world. That is the seed of the world. And now you can see that the yellow area has changed. So this is actually the chunk the flying machine is in. So if I want to tell uh, the server that there's a flying machine there ready to get started, you can use this command, start, then the chunk. The tool isn't very polished yet. I would like to click here and then it will auto fill that in, but I haven't implemented yet that yet. Um, and the third value that it needs is actually the hash set size that I mentioned earlier. With my 1000 flying machine set up, that's going to be 32,768. So now the tool knows that there is a flying machine here. What the tool also needs is the timing constraints for the flying machine. I tested those out and yeah, I, I tested those. And yeah, it's just this long string that you need to copy in here. And if I now go to the world border and set up the tool, now you can see that there are some chunks that the flying machine can't reach, but that's fine because there are others, other chunks here where the flying machine can reach. So this flying machine is actually capable of going all the way to the world border and generate a portal here. So we are really close 
uh, to getting to the world border. And this is going to happen pretty soon. But now for the, for the demonstration, let's not go to the world border. Let's go back to where the flying machine is. And let's say the hash set size isn't that large because there is no 1000 flying machine set up. Uh, I think you can safe, almost always safely assume that the hash set size is 1024. That will happen pretty quickly if you just move around a little bit in the world. And then you immediately see that there are more priority zero chunks popping into existence here. And that just means that the flying machine will not be able to go as far as it would with the setup. So now we need to pick a chunk where the flying machine uh, should go. Let's use this chunk because this chunk can generate portals. So I just uh, use the target command here to get, and if I just use the coordinates of the, the chunk coordinates of the, the target command, it will spit out when I can start the flying machine and it will be able to reach here. So for example, I can't start the flying machine at a 164 uh, game ticks because then something would go wrong. In this case, uh, I think that is uh, from an, that is this bad window here is protecting uh, an instant wire. So if I trigger the instant wire at the wrong moment, it might break. So I just added this to this timing string here. So yeah, let's uh, take one of the good windows, so where I can start the flying machine. So 850 game ticks after the autosave, I can start the flying machine. Oops. 865, if I add this to this command, I can get the exact timings that I need to program into the timer. So the first flying machine is supposed to start 865 game ticks after the autosave. And the second flying machine, 2665 game ticks, and so on. It also puts out the values as seconds, uh, just so that I can easily uh, program that into my timer. So let's actually go to the timer and program in those values. So I'm only going to start one flying machine and that means that I can, that I only need four slots. Let's actually turn off this, those annoying chunk borders. Oh, I went too far. Did I just hear a torch burn out? That, that's not good. <laughs> okay, seven, six, five, four, three. Okay, so uh, if I only have one flying machine, then I need four slots on the timer because yeah, the, the timer always triggers at game tick zero, so that's a given. And then it needs to trigger the first flying machine, the second flying machine, the fast flying machine that catches up, and the chunk safe state setup. So I need to start at address three, and then the timer will count down to two, one, and zero, and then it's done. So let's just clear out the old value that's programmed in here. The first value I need to program in uh, is 
bind to five. Okay, so the next value that the tool gave me is 133.25. The next value is 169.85. Hundred and sixty nine point eight five. And the last value, which is for the chunk safe state setup, is six hundred and thirty eight point two. Okay, so now the timer is mostly programmed. I just have to reset the address uh, to the starting position. So this is the first uh, the first time that it needs to trigger. And before I can start the timer, I actually have to go and program those droppers correctly. So over here, I'm starting the rest flying machine. I need one item in here. I need two items in here, three items in here. and four items in here. So because there are no other flying machines, I don't actually have to interleave those uh, uh, those triggers. Yeah, I need to make sure that there are eight minecarts in this dispenser. There need to be eight fire charges in here, so when the minecarts uh, when the minecarts come over to this side, they will trigger this dispenser and the fire charge will destroy the minecart. Actually, uh, let's demonstrate this. My minecarts, there. There we go. And this also triggers the device down there. For the minecarts actually being able to be detected here, and for the fire charge to destroy the minecart, uh, there's actually a chunk loading grid here, which loads of five by five chunks around this portal and around this rail here. So now this is the first flying machine that is supposed to be triggered. So it needs two items in here. The first trigger will not start anything, it will just load the area. Oops. So those flying machines here, the one up here and the one down there, will get triggered second, so it needs three items. And the last one is this fast flying machine, so it needs four items. Then I need to remove the safety that's locking the flying machine in place. And now this flying machine is ready to go. 
but there's one more thing that I need to do. It's here on the south side. I actually have to program the chunk save state setup. So this is supposed to trigger on the first trigger because it's supposed to load the area. And then at the fifth, because that's the one after all the blind machines. Yeah, five items in this dropper actually cor corresponds to the address three on the uh, on the timer, so it's always two less or two more items. Yeah, so here there's plenty minecarts in here. There's also plenty fire chargers in here. The same thing over here with the chunk with the 5x5 five five chunk loader down there. And because the flying machine is going is going west, I need a chunk safe state setup or I need a portal seat chunk that actually uh, let's first remove all the old programming from those. I need a chunk I need a chunk safe state setup or a portal seat chunk that is loading the south that is generating a portal in the southeast of the flying machine. That's that just because it is it needs to it needs to uh, actually uh, generate the portal in the chunk where the flying machine is in. So the first trigger just loads the area again, and the second trigger turns uh, triggers the chunk safe state setup. Now this should be ready to go to. So again, let's actually start. Start the chunk debug tool so we can follow this. Oh, oops, I didn't want to do that. Also, I'm on the wrong side here, so let's just go to the right. Correct side. I want to uh, spectate those chunks here. Let those chunks unload. And what I now can do is I can do the same thing that I showed earlier. and get this clock synchronized. There it is. Now I want an AFK player here to just keep the area loaded. I'm not triggering the chunk debug, uh, the 1000 flying machines because that's actually not necessary for this short distance. But I'm turning on the perma loader. Actually, I want to check again if I made this did this correctly. Yeah, I. Actually, put it in the correct dropper. So um, now I just need to start the timer, which I do by pressing this button. So, yeah, so the timer is connected to this 900 game tick clock, and that is how it gets started at the correct game tick. I'm just going to tick warp the rest now, however long that's going to take. 
So the first trigger loaded the area. The second trigger will start a flying machine. The third trigger will start the second flying machine. And now the fourth trigger is starting uh, the last flying machine that is faster than the other two and, and will catch up on them. Yeah, this is just taking a while. Uh, when the flying machine arrives, then it's going to load uh, three chunks from the 2x2. Two two. Let's check where is it going. Seven. Yeah, it's this number here. I was looking down here and was a little bit confused right now. Uh, so yeah, this chunk, it's going to um, stop in. So you can see the fast flying machine already overtook the second flying machine and it's about to collide with the first one. And as it did, it loaded this, uh, those three chunks. And what this flying machine is going to do, it's going to load this chunk, this chunk, then it's going to generate this chunk, and then it's going to load the last chunk generating the portal. This was a small lag spike because it triggered the chunk safe state setup. And there we go. Um, you can actually see already that it generated a portal because the portals behave uh, similar to hoppers. So they keep the chunk there in loaded. And now teleport to the west side. There's a new portal here. There's actually some tricks to arrange the portal and, and this uh, however you want. Uh, I'm not going to cover them uh, in this video. Maybe I, uh, if I find the video, I. I I link it. But yeah, it, uh, it just generated this portal. And if I go here, I'm actually where the flying machine stopped and generated the portal. So that's how you can use this tool to generate uh, portals. So this is the flying machine coming in again. It's gonna, it's loading those two chunks here and then it's generating this chunk because this chunk was never loaded before. So if you have, if, if you plan your flying machine so that it actually generates a portal seed chunk there instead of just any chunk. Uh, let's see, where, where would be a good uh, candidate for that? Here for example. Because this uh, this chunk here is surrounded by uh, by chunks that can generate portals, so this chunk could be used here in place of this chunk to generate a portal there. So let's check this out. This chunk is gonna uh, generate portal in the northeast of the 2x2 two two area, of the 2x2 two two population area. So uh, because of that, you can approach this chunk either from, from the north or from the east. So if you approach it from the north, um, your flying machine has to end up in the north uh, east of the population area and yeah the northeast this if you're coming from the north 
and uh, want your flying machine to end up in the northeast of the population area, and your flying machine has to stop diagonally from this portal seed chunk, because what you've seen here is that the flying machine stops here, and the chunk it generates is on the diagonal in the diagonal direction. So you would actually have to come in with your flying machine from here. The flying machine would stop here. And this here would be the 2x2 two two it would load. So the portal would then spawn in the northeast of the 2x2. Two two. And if your flying machine would come from the east, it would still need to uh, end up in the northeast of the 2x2, two two, so it would come in here, load this chunk, load this chunk, generate this chunk, and then load this chunk. So the flying machine would stop in the northeast of the 2x2 two two again. That is how you can use those without a chunk save state setup. Uh, another alternative that I that I never tried, but that de uh, that would also definitely work is if you just had a second flying machine uh, coming into one of the portal seed chunks, generating it in the exact game tick. Oh no, no, it's not really an exact game tick. It's just between this, so it has to happen after it. The, this flying machine generated the chunk and before it populates the area. So there's there's basically one game, uh, two game takes in between, and you could have another flying machine generate a, a portal seed chunk uh, during the two game takes. There's actually one more thing I want to show you, which is this flying machine that I designed. Um, this flying machine is uh, faster than the ones I currently have, uh, but the downside of it is that it's less flexible. So with my old flying machine, that one can be reconfigured uh, to use almost any uh, chunk, uh, chunks any uh, portal seed chunk for generating the portal, but this needs to generate the portal in a very specific uh, position, which is on this or on this block here. Okay, there it starts. It has a 4.4 engine for, for the main part and a blazing fast 5 blocks per second engine for catching up and stopping it in the correct position. Yeah, what's uh, holding me back from using this on the survival server right now is that I still have to set up the chunk save state setups for this exact position here, so I can so I can actually use the machine. And also, uh, what I need, what I also need is I need to uh, change my uh, change my tool a bit because it cannot actually generate. A schedule for this flying machine because uh, yeah the way it moves is a little bit more complicated and it won't stop I can't actually get it to stop at each chunk border so my tool would have to take that into account and that's not really in there yet so once I've got that I can switch to those flying machines which are yeah a lot faster. One third faster actually. So yeah, so so I've shown you now all the major parts of uh, of my setup and we are almost at the world border. We're gonna be there really soon. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna make an update video once that happens. So see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.